hey, I am talking about how to let in whatever 2021 awesomeness is going to come. And whatever it is you want, the thing I know is that you need to make space for it. It needs to have time, space, and energy to bring it in. But the problem with most of us is in our brains, in our lives, in our spaces, space is something that we are really lacking. So I've invited Barbara Trapp, a certified professional organizer and productivity coach to help talk to us about how to make space in our lives so that we can bring in the abundance, bring in whatever we want so that 2021 can be a different kind of year for us. So Barbara, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me on. Um, tell us a little bit about what you do and who you help. Um, well, I've, uh, you know, I help people get organized, whether it's their physical stuff or their mental clutter, um, helping them move forward. And I have been working virtually, totally virtually since mid-March. Mm -hmm. The funny thing is that, that uh, my goal for 2020 was to go 30 to 50% virtual by the end of the year. And guess what? I accomplished that in the first quarter. <laughs> Cross it off the list. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> so um, given that you help people with productivity and organization and um, basically becoming more organized. I'm really curious today because my, my audience is, are, are incredibly busy women. They're overachievers. They have a lot going on. They would probably say they have, they, they describe themselves as frazzled or scattered, overwhelmed. My guess is that you work with people exactly like this too. Oh, exactly that. In fact, uh, my tagline is um, non-judgmental help for busy and overwhelmed people. Oh my God, I love that. That's so perfect. So can you share with us... Well, can you share with us some of um, your insights about these types of women who are, and I don't want to say like these types of women in a negative way, but like almost everybody I talk to and the people you talk to, they are overscheduled, overwhelmed. So can you tell me some insights that you have about them and what holds them back from productivity? Oh, sure. But first of all, I think everybody deserves to give themselves a big hug just <laughs> for making it this far through 2020. Um, because uh, one of the, I think the biggest things I know I've learned was flexibility and adaptability. Um, I mean, I've always been flexible and pretty adaptable, but man, <laughs> I think we've all been pulled kicking and screaming through some of these changes and limitations and uh, have, had, have had to learn to adapt. So yes. kudos to everybody. High fives to everybody, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I think really one of the biggest things is um, women just trying to do it all, I've heard it before, um, I'm the same way. I've had to really cut things down and um, um, get some help. So I think trying to do it all and not delegating or, or getting help when it's offered or available is just, um, it's just a no-no. We've, we've got to do that to survive. Uh, because even really organized women, because when, when all this craziness and chaos is going on, we could just kind of lose our way and, and feel scrambled. So you're saying that even the most organized among us are also feeling like our brains are scrambled at this point. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I know I've talked and worked with a number of organized women who, who um, just, you know, these are major life transitions we've gone yeah. through. And anytime you've got a life transition, um, you can expect a few bumps in the road. Um, but with this year in particular, it's just, you know, continuous. It's all over the place. Yes. And I would say I'm an organized person. Like, I feel like I was born organized because some people will like congratulate me for being organized. And I'm like, it's not, there's like this, it's like congratulating me for having blue eyes. I was just born this way. So it's not a trait that I think is, you know, better or worse. I do think we can learn coping skills to become more organized, but even this year, being a born organized person, I have been very challenged to keep my shit together. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> um, you know, and I tell people, I said, you know, it's really not how people appear to be. It's really is if you can find everything, you're organized, even mm. if your environment looks like it's messy. I love you know, that. Messy people could be organized and really um, or, organized people or peer, people who have a very uncluttered area could be really disorganized because a lot of their things can be tucked in closets and um, drawers and stuck away, just, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Um, but I got to see nothing, which is perfectly fine, but it's really just, um, you know, your personal choices and what, what makes you comfortable. So I don't so, judge anybody on what their version of organization is. I think that's an important, powerful point to make. Yeah. Um, tell me more about 
what are some of the what are some of the other like misinformation out there or myths about productivity and clutter? Like you just gave us that gem. Like, is there any other thing that we're thinking about ourselves that like we could just let ourselves off the hook for because it's a lie anyway? Sure, I think so. Um, I actually um, wrote an article last year um, called Five Myths and um, what was the exact title? About goals, habits, and willpower. Mm -hmm. So um, one of them is that um, you're going to achieve your, you're more likely to achieve your goals if you tell people. But the thing is, they've also found that if you tell people, you've already got this little feeling of accomplishment and you haven't even done anything yet. So for some people, it might be better to not tell everybody your big goals. Okay. Um, there's two different points of view on it. So just think how that works for you. If you tell people, does that motivate you to start? Or do you already feel like ah, step one is done? It's off my chest now. Right. <laughs> right. Um, the second one is that um, you should start every day with the hardest task. But man, if you're looking at a big, you know, task to do, you know, eat that frog, yes. um, get that big rock out of the jar first or whatever, um, it might take you a while to get started because you're just dreading it. Um, I know I practice um, productive procrastination and I bet a lot of people do. That's why you get a lot of things done um, instead of the things that are really the oh. priority. <laughs> I get what you're saying. Okay. I'm really productive when I'm, you know, avoiding yes. something big. Yes. So, um, but sometimes if you start with the smallest task or break that big one down to smaller ones and get a, the first little step done, you get a feeling of accomplishment that kind of inspires you to move forward for the rest of the day. That's a good one. I definitely have not used that term before productive procrastination, <laughs> but yeah. it's like you, you'll do everything except the one thing you need to get done. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My, my home will be sparkling, and <laughs> but I still <laughs> will not have gone to the post office. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, there, let's see. The third one. Minutes? Okay. Yeah. There's, there's three more. So one of them is that, you know, 21 days to build a habit. Um, and I, I can't quote everybody in here, but I'll just direct you to the website to look at the, for the post, but um, it really can take more time than that. So it could take anywhere from 18 to 254 days, depending on what the habit is. Wow. So this is from a study. Um, again, I'm sorry, I can't quote it here, but you might just start thinking about 21 days as a streak, like mm -hmm. an initial start. So if you can't get a habit to form within that 21 days, don't beat yourself up about it just, you know, start the next 21 days. These are so um, life affirming and you are just speaking my language so much because I always say there's no one way to do anything. And we hear from like these gurus that this is the formula and this is the way, and this is the funnel. And it's, and what you're saying is you have to know yourself and test yeah. it out. And you've already given us exactly. three, three myths that you're right. just busting and that, that we can like be kind to ourselves about. <laughs> That's right. So what's um, number four? Yeah, the number four is about limited willpower that, you know, we have a certain amount of willpower for during the day. And then, you know, once we've avoided eating two chocolate cupcakes before lunch, um, we're done. We can't say no to anything else, but it's not necessarily the case. Um, if you, you can kind of re-energize yourself if you start thinking of your reasons why mm -hmm. um, and your goals, and you can, that can sometimes stir up some extra motivation to, to keep going. Uh, let's see. The last one is I'm really guilty of this. Well, not guilty, but it's just different. Think only of positive outcomes. Oh. I know we're supposed to think positive, but um, I have a CAPM that's a certified associate in project management. And one thing I learned was about risk management. Mm -hmm. So I tend, if I'm thinking, really hoping for something to work out well, I actually think, okay, it's not going to go well. What, are th what would make it not go well? So I actually use the negativity to do some risk management so that I can fix things so that the thing goes well. <laughs> you know, that is, that, I think that's really smart because it's like unpacking all the possibilities, not necessarily right. perseverating on them or, yeah. or focusing, but like unpacking them and having contingency plans. What if, what if, what if, what if? Yeah, exactly. And, saying, and that's not if, for what? everybody. Like not everybody could handle that, but no, some no, people no. could. No. And I, I think positive most of the time anyway, but I also think, okay, what could go wrong? What am I worried about? Okay, what could I do to fix that? Mm -hmm. um, and I just, if that really works for me. It, you know, it's a little bit uncommon, but I think that can lead you to some good outcomes in the end. Those are great strategies. So given the people that you work with, 
when you help somebody overcome their clutter in a, and I'm, I'm sensing that you help people in a really personalized way, uh, like yes. you design something for them. Yeah. Um, how does that open up success possibilities for them? Because my clients, like what if we talk about on this, this podcast is all about creating space for success. Mm -hmm. And so what happens to your clients when they start to do this work? Well, it's like, if I have a number of clients who said, you know, I just can't think I've got to get this done. I've got to clear some space. I've got to take care of my parents' estate. They passed away a year and a half ago. That's very common. Um, that's actually um, a number of my clients are women who are kind of in the sandwich generation. They're helping, still helping children to some degree. They've also got their parents or their parents have passed and now they've got a house to downsize and, um, and things to get rid of. So, um, I just lost my train of thought. What was your question? <laughs> I wanted to know. <laughs> I wanted to know once people kind of clear out the clutter, okay. what opens up for them success wise? Right. So once they finally get through and clear out, they actually give themselves permission to pursue a passion that they've been putting off. Mm. It's like, oh, I can't start that until I get this done. Oh my God. The thing they want to get done could take half a year, mm -hmm. but it's just like magic. I've got uh, one client now who had just a lot of things to work through. And she's now um, at least halfway through a book. Mm. That was one of her ultimate goals. And it's just so refreshing to see. And just everything has changed in her demeanor. I would imagine that once that starts to happen for your clients, their sense of confidence just soars. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had a client tell me that yesterday. Um, it's another type of client to help is business owners who need to grow their business, but they've got to get everything out of their head and onto yeah. paper. Yeah. So whether it's, you know, figuring out the structure of their company, who's going to do what, what positions they need, job descriptions and all that. And he said yesterday to me, he said, you know, it's really boosted my confidence mm. um, getting through this. And I think that, that I loved hearing it. Um, and this is a very successful person, but yes. you know, things behind the scenes may, you know, it may not be what it seems to be behind the curtain. hundred percent. I have a client who has a very big company and she's the president and CEO of it and everything lives in her head. And so what we do is we pull everything out of her head and just like create it into something that's like actionable. And it completely has changed her life to just have somebody do that for her. So I, yeah. I know the value of it. It's so, it's, it's so much fun to watch. Oh yeah. I did a color chart of a weekly schedule for him. Once we decided, you know, figured out what he needed to do every day, or at least three times a week, how much time he needed to put into different activities in his business. And we actually blocked out the time every day. It's not to say every time is blocked. I mean, he's got some good free time and, mm -hmm. you know, he's got his boundary, which is great. And he's got a family. So um, I made all the family time in yellow and it takes up a lot of space. It's, it's kind of nice to see. But people whose brains don't work like that are so appreciative to work with somebody whose brain does work like that. So it, it can have such a big impact to work, to partner up with somebody whose brain works not the same way as ours does. Right, right. I think, you know, I think in an organized way, but also flexible, uh, yes. flexible. Because not everybody wants the same type of organization. Exactly. I've had somebody call me once and say, now, I know about Marie Kondo. Are you going to come in my house and make me pile all my clothes on the bed and then leave me? No. <laughs> I mean, I'm, you know, we're all, all professional organizers I know are very grateful for her and others coming out and uh, kind of bringing light to what we do. Mm -hmm. But there are so many ways to accomplish things. And when I was working in person, um, I, we worked about four hours at a time and we only did one area where we could make a difference and yeah. never left chaos behind. I want them to feel a good feeling of accomplishment, a start and an end. And uh, four hours was good. Now working, um, around two hours for each session, but more frequently. Mm -hmm. So they're keeping up the momentum and it's not as physically demanding that way too, even though I'm not there in person. But those who say, oh, I just can't physically do four hours, they can right. do usually two. It just and a lot of it sit down anyway. <laughs> it must just create a sense of lightness that, like yeah. you were talking about your client who can now, she's in the middle of her book, like it just creates this lightness. But this all goes back to something you said at the very beginning, which was, 
people need to ask for help. Like if they have something that's been sitting on their list forever or sitting in their dreams forever and they've never been able to take action on it, it's time to admit that help is needed and it's no, there's nothing to be ashamed of for it. Exactly. Yeah. And that's one of the uh, terms is body doubling. So if you've ever noticed, if you're trying to clean up a space and it always works better if somebody's with you, even if they're not helping, they're just kind of, you know, encouraging you mm -hmm. and that's body doubling. Um, and, and I, that's what I do with people. Um, we're sitting in front of each other at a computer and sometimes the person is just going through paperwork and mm -hmm. asking questions um, or trying to make out a plan for downsizing a house and getting rid of it. And what do I need to do first? And, Call the realtor, get a stager, or how do I figure out what goes where? And so we're, you know, constantly working through those plans and just having somebody to bounce ideas off and, uh, you know, helps. So, you know, I wonder if your people think I should know how to do this. I like they kind of should all over themselves. I yeah. should be able to do this. I shouldn't have to like. Do your people come to you with those preconceived ideas? Like there's something wrong because they are unable to do it by themselves oh yeah they um uh, and it's usually just totally frustrated and can't just can't do it anymore i had a um client um call me the other day a few days ago and said you know the downsizing in this house for a year and uh i just walked in and I'm like i can't i just can't do it anymore i said i'm so sorry for calling you out of the blue well if people didn't call me out of the blue <laughs> i wouldn't have any I mean, it's so true because people really when you get sick of your own bullshit, that is when you are ready to make a change. And I say that to my clients all the time. Like I, I did a call with a woman who had just come out of life coaching school and she had not tried to start her business yet. She didn't have that frustration of like pulling the lawnmower string 57 times before it'll start, <laughs> yeah. which is when most of the women that I meet, that's where they are. They've been like, -na 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 <laughs> and so this woman, we were having a call and she hadn't experienced any of the frustration of trying to start a business yet. And she didn't hire me because she wasn't frustrated. Like there was no, um, there was no like being sick of her own bullshit. And so, you right. know, I love that people apologize. Like, I'm sorry, I'm such a mess by the time I came to you. I'm like, this is where I meet all my clients. Everybody's a mess. Cause we're just really frustrated. Exactly. And you know, there was a time uh, when I was, um, you know, uh, married and raising a child and working full time uh, at a corporate job and then uh, working in my husband's business that I just, I would have hired a professional organizer. <laughs> I didn't even know they existed. Right, right. I mean, I heard, I'd seen some books and I'm like, I just can't, I, I don't even know where to start. I mean, and, and just, you know, we only have so many hours in a day and mm -hmm. some of them we have to use to sleep. Yes, so, I don't think for the free time that you were talking about with your other client. Yeah, That's yeah, really because important. we should be working to support our lives outside of work. Um, of course, if you're a business owner, hopefully you're doing something you love anyway. Yes. But um, I think, you know, I know many people who could have benefited um, from some help or support, you know, at some point in their lives. Yes. And so we want to tell you this exists. Go find somebody if you're struggling with something. Exactly. So question um, my audience loves a really specific tool. And I know you've already given us some gems about the myths, but do you have any like specific tool or strategy that is just a go-to for your clients? Mm -hmm. um, yes. Um, some people have talked about, you know, I don't even know how to get started. My office is a mess. It's just, where do I start? Like it's so and far the, gone. Yeah. And the problem is I get in there and then I, you know, get distracted and I just get fed up and I leave. So <laughs> I say, okay, open the door <laughs> first and let's take a look at the floor. If the floor is a mess, start there because that's kind of a safety hazard and you might as well get that stuff up so you can move around. Um, if the floor is clear, but the whole place is, you know, th the next place is the desk. If you can't figure out where to start um, and the whole room is packed, just pick an area, start, mm -hmm. go, just go clockwise. Okay. and stay there and don't move to the next area until you've gone all the way around. Because then you could just hyper-focus on one little area at a time. Or one little drawer or one little something. Yeah. yeah, so, and then the key to not getting um, distracted is to put a processing box outside the door. Okay, what is that? That is, you put a box outside and let's say you find a coffee cup with a science project in it, growing it. And you're like, you're going to take it to the kitchen. And then you're like, oh, there's a few dishes. I need to wash this. And oh, God, I just heard the um, timer go off in the dryer. 
I need to fold these clothes. Man, I haven't even made my bed yet. Now let me hang up these clothes <laughs> and make the bed. And you know, oh, it's lunchtime. And what was I doing? Right. <laughs> so, so it may sound gross, but just put that coffee cup in the processing box or right outside the door. Okay. And um, and so then when you take a break, you can take that box and distribute it. But you're going to plan your breaks. So just do not leave the room. So I had clients running all over the places. It's not. Yes. Right put this box here and we're going to stay in the room. You really, you can tell that you know your ideal audience member deeply. <laughs> and I always say to my clients, like, that is the number one thing that you need to know about your audience is what yeah. are they thinking? And you know what your audience is thinking. That's awesome. Um, I have a question. What was I going to ask you? Oh, I was going to say, if I didn't do business coaching, I think because what I like, I am so excited by what you're talking about that I'd be like, I think I would be doing this for a living because I think it's so, um, what's on the other side of doing the actions of the decluttering and the organizing is so much peace and freedom. Oh yeah. Oh, it's like, a it is. And you know, you're already starting at a great spot being a coach because, um, and that's why I uh, went through a two-year coaching program and uh, because and it was called Coach Approach for Organizers, specifically mm -hmm. designed because we are constantly coaching. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it's just such, such a vital part of what we what we do. It's not therapy, it's coaching. It's the different thing. It's just it helping move people forward and, and gain some new awareness. Right. Because there's a reason that things have gotten to the place where they are. And as a coach, a productivity coach, you can help them move sure. through that. That's sure. awesome. So I'm sure that there's one gem that I haven't asked you about, like, or is there something else that you'd like to share with my audience that I haven't thought of? Oh, gosh, we, have covered a lot. Let's see we did cover um, a lot. Well, let's see, virtual organizing. Some people say, you know, how does that, you know, wh why would that even work? And I've had one client say, you know, I love it because um, you see only what I want you to see. Oh, that's fair. And uh, we are hyper focused, so it really can be ideal for people who are struggling with, you know, ADD, ADHD, OCD. Perfect. So we're hyper focused on one area, and that's where that hyper focus can really be helpful. Um, and because if they leave, I see that they've gone off camera. <laughs> right. Come back. Come yeah. Back. Come on back. And uh, and especially with the shorter sessions, we can keep some momentum up and mm -hmm. you know, do some mm -hmm. coaching along the way too. Well, this, this is a perfect segue into my next question, which is how, how do people work with you? Sure. Um, they can reach me through my website, zenyourden.com. There's a link there where they can um, schedule a free consultation. Mm -hmm. um, they can also see some of my blog posts there. And if they sign up for my newsletter on the site, they're going to be up to date with any activities or podcasts that are coming along, um, articles, um, specials. I have a Black Friday special coming up nice. and it's a secret, but if you want to hear about it, you got to be on the, on the news. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Um, so where can we find you on the socials? Um, it's organizing with Barbara Trapp on Facebook okay. and Zen Your Den on Instagram and Twitter. Nice. And LinkedIn, well, Barbara Trapp. Okay. LinkedIn. Yes. I never go on LinkedIn, um, yeah. but I, it's such a great a place to, to connect with people. So thank you for including it. Thank you so much for your expertise and all the gems you shared today, because I think that whether your house has crap all over the floor or you simply have clutter inside your mind because it's very busy in there, the things that you've shared with us today, we can use for any kind of clutter in our life and open the space so that we can let in whatever 2021 is about to bring us. Exactly. I Thank agree. you, Barbara. So great to chat with you. Okay, everyone. Bye. I'll see you next week with another great conversation about how to prepare for 2021 and making some space to allow it in. Bye, everyone.